What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to Johnny K Picks. And in this video, I'll be going over my full card picks and predictions, along with the bets that I'm looking at so far for UFC Vegas 84, Uncle Iev versus Walker. First card of the year, 2024. Brand new year for everybody. Start fresh with their bets, with their picks, all that good stuff. Looking forward to this because it's been way too long for fights. But uh, definitely please hit that like button for me. Subscribe if you're new or if you just haven't yet. Leave some comments below on your favorite fights this week, how, what you're looking forward to in the future even. Definitely helps out the videos a ton with the algorithm. And click on those notifications too so you know when all my videos come out when our live streams go live, all that good stuff. And just real quick, we're a little bit of news. Um, Defend Your Unit show with me and Cody is going to be on Tuesday nights this year because Cody's work schedule changed a bit. And then we will also do like our pre-fight shows that we used to do two hours before the fights. Those are going to be on Friday nights. I believe it'll be 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So definitely want to click those notifications for both of us. So that way you get uh, notified when those do come out. But brand, like I said, brand new year for everything. So I just want to go over in case nobody knows yet, but I have a Patreon. So definitely check that out. Uh, I have a new spreadsheet coming out too with the time props, all that good stuff. I'll show you here in a second, but it's $5.99 a month. If you want to uh, support my channel, support the Patreon, I give you my bets right away. I also do soccer bets, NFL bets too. I will post those on there as well, along with my UFC uh, betting cheat sheets, which I will show you the new one that I do. Uh, right now, just a little sneak peek. So it's going to look something along like like this. It tells you like the probabilities of when uh, of fighters, when they start uh, round two, round three, the overs, the unders, all that good stuff. It's going to kind of look like this. Um, the last 10 fights, I'm only going to do that. But if they don't have 10 fights, it's going to be like, like Tom Nolan. He only had six. So it's going to be the last six fights. But if you're into that stuff, you bet a lot of overs and unders, fight starts round two, stuff like that, like I do. This is definitely a must. So the five ninety nine a month, you'll get that for every card, every uh, matchup for every fighter. So I think it's worth it. Just me. I, that's what I do. That's what I use. And that's how I do my bets. So if you like my bets when I do that, definitely check that out on the Patreon. It's at Johnny K Picks for Patreon. So go there, type in Johnny K Picks. You'll see me right away. But um, other than that, let's just get right into it. I'm not going to break down the other one that happened last year. It was a cool... Um, Cool end of the year um, card for UFC. I think it was 296, if I'm not mistaken. So that was a good good all around. But let's jump down here. There's only going to be 12 fights as of now. A couple fell off kind of recently. Um, stuff have been short notice and stuff like that. But let's jump in there. Like I said, Felipe Boons versus Joshua Van. Uh, Joshua Van is taking this fight on somewhat short notice. I think it's like three or four weeks or so because of that long break. But uh, Boons is making his UFC debut. He's a solid grappler. He's got good uh, submissions as well. Striking is pretty good. He can be a little sloppy with his striking, but he does have some power. Not super technical, like I said. But he can be hittable on the feet, too. And when he grapples, he kind of goes for submission over position. So he wants to get that finish. And um, he's a finisher. So, And Joshua Van, um, like I said, he's kind of taking this fight on a somewhat short note. He's a very good striker with very good boxing combos. Uh, always pushes forward. He throws a ton of volume, likes to stay in his opponent's face. He can get rocked a couple times here and there if, if he gets a little too loose, if you want to say, but he's durable. He gets right back up. Uh, he's not really a grappler by any means, but he can grapple if need be. And he also does have pretty good takedown defense too. So I like Joshua Van here a lot. I like his striking way more than Felipe's. Um, now, if it's, this fight does get to the mat, it'll be a little bit sweaty, but I think this fight's going to play out on the feet the majority of the time. I think Joshua's takedown defense is pretty good. He knows he's not going to be able to grapple with Felipe, and um, Felipe knows he's probably not going to be able to strike. So we'll see what happens. But um, just going by pure talent here, I love. I like Joshua Van. I like what I see from him. And um, yeah, I know he's super young. He's 22 years old, but uh, really good striker. So I think he gets this done by easy, not a easy, I should say, by decision. Um, he could get a late knockout depending on how his pace looks as the fight goes on because Felipe's cardio isn't all that great either. So um, maybe after the first round, he'll turn it up, Joshua. So give me uh, Joshua Van to win by decision here. Next one's going to be Tom Nolan versus Nicholas Mota. 
Uh, Tom Nolan also making his UFC debut here as a solid striker. He's a lengthy kind of guy, 6'3", 76 inch reach. So he's going to have the height and reach advantage uh, by a ton here. Um, he, he, he has good power in his hands. He can get himself into brawls from time to time, but he and usually wins those. Has a very good chin. Takedown defense, though, isn't all that great, but he can grapple. He can get up, all that good stuff. But I don't see his fight getting to the mat because Nicholas Moto is a guy. He's a striker. Uh, pretty good boxer, good kicks too. Um, he has good power in his hands. He's a little low volume though for me, especially as the fight goes on. Can be hittable too, can get rocked. We've seen his chin get checked a couple times, I think. Um, in his last five, four or five losses, he's been knocked out or finished. So, and I, I know this one was a no contest, but basically he was gonna get finished that fight or lose. So the ref made a mistake there. But um, yeah, I like Nolan here a lot. I like that. I think just because he's going to be the bigger fighter is going to give Nicholas Moda some problems. And we know what Moda is by now. He's been in the UFC for about four fights or so. Kind of look the same in all of them. I don't see any improvements at all. And um, I think if Nolan wants to stay at range, he should be able to pick him apart. And uh, Moda likes to look for that right hand and knock out people. And that's all he does is just throw that right overhand and try to knock somebody out, especially later in the fight. So he doesn't like put together combos or anything crazy like that. Nolan will put together combos. So um, I like Nolan here a lot. I think he gets this one done. Um, I'll, I'll say by KO, but I wouldn't be shocked if it's a um, decision. But Nolan's a finisher, so he's going to go for the finish. Next one's going to be Weston Wilson versus Gene Silva. Uh, Wilson, we've seen him against, uh, I think it was Brito, yeah? yeah Brito in his last fight, it was, that was a tough one for him. But he's not the greatest of strikers, let's put it that way. Uh, but he's a very good grappler with very good submissions. He's tall, uh, 6'1", 73-inch reach, so he's going to be the taller guy here. Um, but let's be honest, I don't think he's UFC level. I'll be, I'm, not, I'm trying to be nice. He's not UFC level. Uh, Gene, though, he's making his UFC debut powerful striker has got good volume he can be a little hittable at times but i don't think he's gonna have to worry too much about that well like i said weston isn't the greatest striker of strikers but um he also has good takedown defense he can grapple too but he's, he wants to stay on the feet he's more so a striker but um silva's a huge favorite here for a reason am i gonna bet the minus 800 no because he's making his ufc debut and um I can see Wilson maybe snatching up a neck or something because he's going to have the height advantage. And Silva is 5'7", so anything can happen with that, like a guillotine or a rear naked choke, standing choke, ninja choke, anything like that. We've seen it a million times with taller fighters like that. But I think from sk like skill to skill on the feet, Gene should get this one done. I'm going to say by knockout, Brito was able to knock out Weston. I'm not saying Gene is as strong and, and crazy powerful as uh, Brito, but... I can see it happening. So give me Silva by knockout here. Next one's going to be a very good fight. Uh, Farid Basharat versus Taylor uh, Lapilus here. And uh, Basharat, super well-rounded guy. Very good wrestling, good takedowns, good grappling when he's on the mat. Uh, solid striking when he's on the feet. But he's more so a wrestler. He wants to get this fight to the mat. But he's no slouch on the feet or anything like that. Not really a finisher, but he did finish his last fight against uh, Clayton Rod uh, Rodriguez, which was a good win for him. Uh, Rick Clayton did come up a weight class to fight him, so I don't want to take too much away from uh, Basra. He did get that finish, and he should have. But like I said, normally he doesn't really have a lot of finishes on his record. Uh, Taylor Laplace, though, very good striker. His power is pretty good, not the not like one one punch knockout guy or anything very good takedown defense at 81 percent. he's very tough to take down but um he can survive on the mat but he, he definitely has a pretty decent get up game and he's hard to take down but he definitely wants to stay on the feet he's a striker and uh he's not really the greatest of finishers as well but um I mean, he can knock you out though but this is going to be a good fight and i'm interested to see how this one plays out but I, i'm going to go with basharat here just because he's the more well-rounded guy I think if he does get that wrestling going, which he should and will, um, he will get this one done uh, probably by boring decision. I don't want to say boring, but by decision. Um, if Taylor can stop those takedowns, though, I think he's the better striker, technical striker at least, and uh, he should be able to win a close decision as well. So I like this fight to go over. I think it's, a, if I seen it last, if I'm correct, if it was like a minus 240, 250 range, which isn't too bad. Both these guys really, like I said, aren't the greatest finishers. They do go to decision more times than not. So give me uh, Basharat to win here by decision. It could be a 
one of those kind of things here. But would it shock me if there was a submission from uh, Bashra? No, it was probably later in the fight, though. So I think the over one and a half in a super safe parlay is pretty good too here. So um, Bashra out by decision. Next one is going to be Marcus McGee versus Gaston Bolan- uh, Bolanos. And uh, McGee, let me get this out of the way for you guys. All right. So McGee, well-rounded guy. <clears throat> I would say he's a better, uh, I mean, he's got power in his hands. He's pretty good. Like, I was going to say he's a better striker, but he does have pretty good grappling, but he just has a lot of knockouts on his record. Um, power in his hands, like I said, good grappling and submissions when he does get the fight to the mat. Likes to push forward. He's durable. Um, is he super technical? No, but he's very, he has good counters. He's got power in his hands, and that's what he usually goes with. Belanos, though, solid striker. He's got good power in his hands as well. Um, good Muay Thai, the Muay Thai guy. Uh, takedown defense isn't the greatest, though, and that's where he gets in trouble a lot. Is he doesn't really have a ground game, and he's been submitted twice in uh, his three losses, and he can get taken down easily, like I said. So I like McGee in this spot a lot. Um, on the feet, maybe Gaston's a little bit more technical, but um, I think uh, McGee can match him with the power at least. And on the ground, I think McGee has that clear advantage. So I, I wouldn't be shocked if McGee goes for some takedowns here and work his grappling and stuff like that. Uh, that's where he's going to have the biggest advantage here. So um, like I said, I like McGee a lot here. I can see him getting a late finish or maybe like a ground and pound finish or a club and sub, something like that. Um, I know Gaston's going to be worried about getting taken down here. So maybe he gets caught with a knee or something like that crazy because McGee's, he's, he has those like crazy little uh, knockout, uh, like spinning knees and uh, spinning knees, spinning elbows, uh, flying knees and stuff like that. So uh, give me McGee to win. I'll say by a finish, maybe second round. I'm not sure if it's going to be by club and sub or anything like that, but I think he gets this one done. Next one is going to be Matthew Selmsberger versus Preston Parsons. Uh, Samuelsberger is taking this fight on uh, somewhat short notice again. Uh, very, he he does have power in his hands. I want to say he's a powerful striker. Doesn't have a lot of knockouts on his record in the UFC. Only if they're super early, like the first couple punches of the fight, he'll get the knockout. But it just seems like he can get knocked downs, but he can't get the knockouts unless it's like right in when the fight starts. But he's got good straights right down the middle, his right. Uh, straight especially he can wrestle if need be he's tough he's durable but his cardio kind of fades as the fight goes on and his fight iq questionable very questionable let's put it that way um parsons very good grappler very good submissions he's a big guy uh okay takedowns i wouldn't say his wrestling is just okay it's not anything crazy or anything bad but um striking he's just okay he does have power in his hands but he's kind of one of those one punch um only guys he doesn't throw together combos he looks for that right hand and tries to get the knockout or land a big punch but his cardio seems to fade at the after the first round as well but he's pretty tough too so he's hard to get out of there but he's been knocked out a couple times so interesting fight here striker versus grappler basically lines to pick them for a reason so I'm going to lean the striker. I'm going to probably regret it because every time I pick uh, Selma's burger, he either lets me down or it's a super close fight. So I'm going to pick him to win here. I just don't think, I think Parsons has one round to get him out of there. And if he doesn't, I think um, Matthew should win this fight, whether it's by decision or maybe like a late knockout too. So um, give me Selma's burger. I'll say this one goes to decision for some weird reason because I could see that, that happening. So I think round one will be crazy. But as the fight goes on, I think it'll slow down. Both guys kind of slow down as the fight goes on, too. I just think um, Parsons slows down a little bit quicker. Let's put it that way. So give me Selma Burger to win by decision. Next one's going to be Andre the Legend Orlovsky versus Waldo Cortez Acosta. And uh, we all, like I said, we all know who Orlovsky is. He's a legend of the game. He's been around forever. He's 44 years old now. And at this point, this is how I'm going to break him down at now when he's 44 years old, because I don't want to go back when he was in his 20s because he was a pit bull, literally. Um, he's Striking is just okay now. Like, he's got good leg kicks. He stays at range well. Striking defense is not there anymore. His head doesn't move. Um, he, his chin, it can be a little dusty at times. He's lost um, his last fight to Dante Mays by knockout. Cody, I hope you listen to that. Knocked him out. 
and uh, Rogerio got him out of there by submission, which that was basically a club and sub. So he's slowing down. He's 44 years old. So Waldo, though, he's a pretty good striker. He throws a ton of volume. He pushes forward. He's always going to be in your face. Uh, durable. He's got decent power. He doesn't have that one touch knockout power, if you want to say. Doesn't check leg kicks at all, though. So that's something that you can look at in this fight. Because, like I said, Andre does throw pretty decent leg kicks, but he's not going to throw a ton. Because I just don't think Andre has the cardio to do it anymore for three rounds, maybe one, one and a half rounds. But I don't think he's going to have to worry too much, Waldo, about that. So, um, like I said, I picked Orlovsky a ton of times, and he's cashed him. Not lately, because he was fighting killers. I didn't even pick him against Dante, to be honest. But um, I got to go with Waldo here. I think he gets the knockout in the first or second round. I don't, I don't think this fight gets to the third. Uh, Waldo did was able to knock out uh, Bretzky in his last fight, which was pretty... Um, I mean, it was a decent win for him. Not to say Bretzky's, you know, amazing, but I didn't think he was going to be able to knock him out, I'll be honest with you. Um, he got him done in the first round, too. So give me Waldo the win. I just think he outvalues him. I think he outcardios him, and I think he gets him out of there. And we've seen Orlovsky kind of, I don't want to say quit, but accept defeat, if you want to say, when he's not going to win. And he taps real quick or anything like that, or he covers up, and then the ref is really quick to get under there and call it off. So I think that's kind of what happens, too. So Waldo by knockout in the first or second round here. Main card now, we got Phil Hawes versus Bruno Ferreira. Um, Phil Hawes, we know this guy. Uh, he's well-rounded, very talented, very good striker. He's technical. He's got very good wrestling too, good takedowns, uh, decent cardio. But the problem is his chin. Every time he gets literally a, an 80% solid chin, chin strike to his chin, he's done. He gets he a little bit wobbly. You can see it in his eyes. He didn't like it. And then the next time he gets hit, then he's done. And we've seen it in his last couple fights. It's just not a good thing, even though it was seven months ago. But he did get pretty, I don't want to say brutally knocked out, but it, was a, it wasn't a good looking one. I'll tell you that. And speaking of not look good looking knockouts with five months ago, uh, Bruno got knocked out too. But he's a very powerful striker with heavy hands. He can be a little low volume at times, um, waiting for that counter or whatever you want to say, but um, he doesn't really grapple as much, but he can grapple if this fight does get to the mat. And like I said, he was just brutally knocked out in his last fight. But on paper, you would pick Phil Haas here, right? And you're like, why is this a pick him then? Well, because Phil Haas chin is no, it's no more. It literally is no more. And I can't trust it. I literally cannot trust it. And I know he's the better fighter here, but we've seen it in uh, with Bruno in his fight against Gregory Rodriguez. Gregory Rodriguez was lighting him up the whole fight until he got counter left hooked and uh, Gregory did, and he got knocked out. And I think that's something that's going to maybe happen, something along those lines too. Phil Hall is going to look really good early in the fight. He's going to look like he's winning. And then Bruno's going to land something, and it's not, and Phil's not going to like it. And then he's going to get, uh, Bruno's going to follow up with a knockout. And I, I just see it in my head. I can't look away. So I'm going to pick Bruno to win by knockout. I think he gets it done in the first or second round. If Phil Hawes does do a wrestle heavy game plan, he might have a chance to drag this fight out and maybe win it by decision or like a late third round finish. But I got to see it first. He's 35 years old now. It doesn't seem like he is, but he's 35 years old with no chin. So to me, it's a lot of hurdles here, even though he's better on paper. So give me Bruno by knockout, unfortunately. Very good fight here. Ricky Simone versus Mario Batista. Simone, very good wrestler. Very good takedowns. Good cardio with those takedowns and wrestling. Good power in his hands. I wouldn't say he's the most technical of strikers, but he can definitely hold his own on the feet. He can be a little bit hittable too against very technical strikers and he can get rocked, but he's very tough and he always pushes forward. And Batista, he's well-rounded. He got, he's got good striking, good power. He's got flying knees, all that good stuff. He mixes in very good grappler, uh, good submissions too. Uh, takedown defense though, isn't the greatest, which that's going to be a key in this fight. But if he does get to the mat, you know, he, like I said, he's got good grappling. He's good off his back. He's got good submissions. He'll probably try to get up or scramble and work a better position, but it's going to be tough for him to do that in this fight. So this is going to be a fun fight. I like both fighters, but I got to lean Simone here. His wrestling is too good. 
And I think if he do, he will go to his wrestling, and I think he will get those takedowns. And I just don't think Mario is going to be able to out scramble. Let's let's put it that way, Simone for three rounds. And um, I think Ricky's uh, wrestling cardio is very good, so he's going to keep spamming those takedowns. And I don't think this fight's going to pretty much stay on the feet too much. That's probably where Mario wants to keep this fight. But I think Ricky's going to get this fight to the mat. And I think it's going to be a long night for Mario. And I really like him, but it's just the styles make fights here. And Ricky's style is just a little bit better suited for Mario than some other the, um, fighters that he's fought. So give me Ricky to win. And I'm going to say by decision, I don't see a finish. If there is a finish, though, I honestly think maybe uh, Batista gets like a some snatches up a maybe like a guillotine or something when Ricky shoots a takedown. That's the only thing I could see. So, but give me um, Simone to win by decision. I think the wrestling is going to be too much. Next one's going to be Jim Miller versus Gabriel Benitez. Junkyard dog Jim Miller at 40 years old here. Um, Well-rounded fighter. I mean, he's more so a grappler, wrestler guy, but lately he's been showing off some striking, some power. He's been knocking out these uh, short notice guys that, you know, that aren't really the greatest, but at least he's getting those knockouts. Fought some good guys too in close competitions. Um, he, you know, like, like we all, we all know who Jim Miller is. Like he's been around forever. He's got good cardio. He's always durable. He's not never going to back away. He can be a little hittable at times, especially as the fight goes on, but he's always going to be in the fight. He's always going to fight for your money. And we got <clears throat> Benitez solid striker. He's got very good kicks. His takedown defense though, isn't the greatest. So I think this is where Jim Miller can use his wrestling and grappling if he wants to, and he probably should. And I think he's gonna have a clear advantage on the on the ground here, but I mean he, but Gabriel does have good um, grappling too. He just doesn't really use it too much, and that was earlier in his career as well. And also, Gabriel Benitez hasn't fought in about a year and a half, so one year, four months. So, and that was against Charlie Ontiveros. So we all know who that that guy is too. Not the greatest fighter, but uh, I gotta go with Miller here, just at, at least one more time. I think this is kind of a step down in competition for Miller. He's fought better guys than uh, Gabriel Benitez lately, too. He's been more active, and um, he wants to fight in UFC 300. And what better way to lead up in that process, UFC 300, than get a win here quick and easy? And I think that's what's going to happen. I think I don't want to say quick and easy. I think he's going to get the win. Let's put it that way. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be by decision. I don't know if it's going to be by a knockout. I don't know if it's going to be by submission, but wouldn't shock me one way or another. So give me Jim Miller to win. I know this is basically a pick em now. But uh, I like Jim Miller's odds. Put it that way. Co-main event, we got Mateus Nicolau versus Manal Cape. The second fight. These guys fought about three years ago. Almost three years ago. Yeah, right here. But um, Nicolau, very good striker. He's very technical. He's got very good counters. Um, solid grappling, but he's more so a striker as of late. He hasn't really shown too much of his uh, grappling. Not really super dangerous, though. I mean, he has, I think he just knocked out somebody recently. Yeah, Matt, Matt Schnell, but we all know that. His chin really isn't that all that great. But uh, he can be a little volume at times, too, because he, like I said, he's a, more so a counter striker. He waits for the counters, and he tries to um, draw the draw his opponents in and then go for the counter here. But um, we all know who Manel Cape is. Uh, very explosive striker. He throws a ton of volume. He pushes forward. He can wrestle at times, but... He doesn't really do it too often. I know I just said he throws a lot of volume, but sometimes there are certain points where he can be a little low volume. And when I say that, I don't know if he's just like re getting the reads or anything like that, but I've seen him like, but I think once he gets those reads, he goes for it. He knows what to do. Um, the last fight against uh, Felipe D Dos Santos was a very good fight. Um, even though Dos Santos took that on short notice, but Manal Kai or Cape did, obviously won that fight pretty clearly but like i said um this is going to be a a very close fight again i think i don't think it'll be as close as the first time because i do think manel has shown more improvements and i and he's the more dangerous fighter and um nicolaus kind of looked the same in his last like three or four fights like i like i said i know he he got knocked out against brandon roy val with that knee and he's looked i mean he hasn't really fought the greatest guys I mean, kind of the same level, if you want to say. But I just think Cape is a little bit more dangerous. Like I said, he's. I think he's been improving a little bit more, too. So give me Cape to win. I'm not, like, super confident, but I'm going to say by decision again. 
Um, but it wouldn't shock me if there is a finish. It's going to be by Cape. So this is going to be a close fight. I'm going to stay away from this fight. Um, I do think Cape's going to win, but I just don't like the line. I don't. I mean, he's not minus 205. He's about minus 230, 240 right now. So to me, it's a little steep. But um, especially if Nikolau won the last time, you would think he'd be like a closer favorite. But it's not. Main event. Magomed Ankalaev versus Johnny Walker, the second, even though the first one was kind of not even a fight, to be honest. But let's let's break it down again. Um, Ankalaev, solid technical striker. He does have some decent pop in his hands, good leg kicks. He could be a little low volume at times. He can wrestle if he wants to or if he needs to. But he just seems to be more so a striker, and he only uses that wrestling if he really needs to do it and or if it's just the advantage there. Walker. Super unorthodox striker. He's got power in his hands. His takedown defense, though, is just okay. He is tough to take down just because he's super t- uh, super tall and lengthy like that. His chin is a little bit of a question mark, but um, he's been looking good the last couple fights, except if you don't want to count when they only fought for about two minutes there because that was kind of weird. And um, we all know what happened when that one because – I saw the writing on the wall. Let's put it that way. And my pick before was Johnny Walker. Now, could he have won that fight by a disqualification? Yes, I thought he could have. But they went the no contest route. Whatever. That's fine. But let's be honest. Ankle is going to win this fight. He's just the better striker. He's the better fighter overall. I don't see um, Walker's going to have to come out with something crazy with that, like that flying knee that he almost landed in that fight. If you remember that. He needs something like that to win the fight. Other, otherwise, he's going to lose. And uh, so give me Uncle I have to win. I'm going to say by third round knockout. This is a five round fight now because it's a main event. The last one was just supposed to be a three round fight. So I think maybe these guys take it a little bit easier in the early early rounds now since they know it's a five round fight. But I'm going to say Uncle I have gets this one done eventually. And like I said, second or third round knockout. And, um, yeah, I'm changing my pick from last time because I saw the writing on the wall after the first minute of the first round of the last fight. I knew uh, Johnny Walker wasn't going to win, so it is what it is. I just want to make sure, though. Is it a main event? Five round? It has to be. Yeah, yeah, it is. Whatever. All right, guys. That is my uh, breakdowns for UFC Vegas 84. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And like I said, please hit that like button on your way out. Subscribe, all that good stuff. Leave some comments below. Helps out the videos a ton. Don't forget to check out my Patreon, uh, Patreon slash Johnny K Picks. Our uh, Defend Your Units live shows are going to be on Tuesday nights, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And then our pre pre fight live shows that we used to do on Saturdays with the guests are going to be on Friday nights, same time, uh, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern time. So uh, hope everybody enjoys the fights. Hope good luck on uh, all your bets, all that good stuff. We're going to start the year out right. Let's get it done. And until next time, happy fighting.